ओम नमो भागवते वासुदेवाय भगवते वासुदेवाय reading from chapter 9 chapter 8 text 22 i can repeat after me ye deha bhajas triguna pradhana ye deha bhajas triguna pradhana gunan vipashyanti uta vatamascha yan mayaya mohita chetasastvam विदु स्वसंस्थ न बहि प्रकाश मीनिंग ये दोज पर्सन्स हु दे भाज हैव एक्सेप्टेड द मेटेरियल बॉडी त्रिगुण प्रधान Influenced by the three modes of material nature, vipassanti can see only. Uta, it is so said. Va, either. Tamaha, the mode of ignorance. Cha, and yat maya ya by the illusory energy of whom. Mohita has been bewildered. Chetasaha, the core of whose heart. Tuam, your lordship. Viduhu, no. So samstham, situated in one's own body. Na, not. Bahi prakashaha. those who can see only the products of external energy the translation for for the shri prabhupad baat ki jaye my lord you are fully situated in everyone's heart but the living entities covered by the material body cannot see you for they are influenced by external energy conducted by the three modes of material nature the intelligence being covered by satva raja tamagun i can see only actions and reactions of this three modes of material nature because of actions and reactions of modes of ignorance whether the living entities are awake or sleeping they can see only the workings of material nature they cannot see your lordship purport unless one is situated in the transcendent loving service of the lord one is able unable to understand the supreme personality of godhead the lord is situated in everyone's heart However, because of the condition, conditioned souls are influenced by material nature, they can see only the actions and reactions of material nature, but not the supreme personality of God. It. One therefore must purify himself internally and externally. A pavitra pavitra va sarva vastham gato apiva yas marit pundari kaksham sabhaya antarab suci. To keep ourselves externally clean, we should bathe three times daily. and for internal cleanliness we must cleanse the heart by chanting of hari krishna mantra members of krishna conscious movement must always follow principle bhai antara suchi and it will be one day be possible to see the supreme personality of god at face to face okay yeah, let me om gyana tamarinda se gyana anjana shala kaya shuru nile tam yena tasmay shri guru vena nama om vishnu vadare krishna krishna udale shri mate bhakti vedanta Tivedanta Swami Nidhina. So this this verse is very nice, and I think it pretty much summarizes our situation in this material world. What we are, that's spoken by sons of Sagar to Lord Kapila Dev. You all know this story. All these sons, they went to Kapila Dev. He was meditating in a cave. and lord kapila dev he is a master of sankhya philosophy he he was living on the bank of ganges with his disciples and he was promoting the propagating sankhya philosophy us so sagar sons of sagar they come here they meet kapila dev and they glorify krishna 
by these chosen verses. Now, one thing, uh, when you when they are glorifying Krishna by glorifying Him and also by glorifying His material energy. That's what they are doing in this verse. Yan Maya, they are glorifying His energy, Maya. How she deludes people. How people cannot see themselves and see Krishna within them. So that's a devotee. For devotee, this entire creation is glorification of Lord. For a non-devotee, this entire creation is an obstacle to meet Lord. That's the difference between a devotee and a non-devotee. A devotee perceives, actually Maya means, there are two meanings of Maya in Sanskrit. One is mercy and one is illusion. So, devotee is expert. Yagya sankirtanai praya janti sumerasa. Devotees are like persons. If somebody comes to kill you and he has a knife, one thing you can do is you can, you can defend yourself. That's okay, good. But the best thing you can do is, or another thing you can do is you can attack. Attack is best. Defense. If, if you learn Kung Fu, it's not there. But the best thing, if you're very intelligent, you can take his knife and kill him. That's the best thing. Just take his own weapon. Take his weapon and kill him. That's a devotee. Devotee, jnanis and yogis, they fight with Maya. That's their strategy. And, uh, and uh, devotees, what they do? Oh, yeah, and devotees, they take the knife of Maya and attack her. That's what devotee is doing. Devotee is using Maya in service of Lord. This is supreme intelligence. And in fact, many jnanis and yogis, they cannot understand devotion. They say, come on, devotees are dancing, they are living so opulently, they are eating so opulently. And it seems they are enjoying. No? It seems many of the Many of Rajvasis, they were criticizing Prabhupada when he came to Vrindavan. Because Prabhupada was coming in you know, cars, so many disciples. Bhakti Siyanta, when, when he first time came to Radha Kund, Shyam Kund, people were criticizing him. Because he was in boots and pants and shirt. And at that time, car was very costly. Like people who had car, it was a luxury. Now it's a need. That time it was a luxury. But he came. So people were criticizing. But actually, people means... Devotees and people who were staying in Radha Kund, Shyam Kund, who were immersed in, in, in the devotional service of Krishna, so called. But the point is, uh, an immature devotee only praises God. But a mature devotee can praise, they praise Krishna and they praise everything connected to Krishna. They can do. They, they have the ability to actually glorify Maya. Because Maya, she, one of the, one of the meaning is mercy. Maya is helping us to become strong. That's what illusion is. If we perceive illusion as illusion, we'll fall down. Because it is said by Chanakya Pandit, if a brahmachari keeps on thinking, I'll not marry, he'll get up married. That's all. If he just keeps on thinking, I'll not marry, I'll not marry, I'll not marry. The first thing he'll do is, he'll marry. That's what he's going to do. So, if, if we keep on thinking, illusion, illusion, if we just fear illusion, and if we don't understand that illusion is also connected with Lord, it's Lord's illusion, we'll fall down. That's a, that's a point. So, for us... Just like Sagar Maharaj, his sons of Sagar, they are teaching us how a devotee perceives the Maya. Devotee perceives Maya as a strict mother. So mother is good, but sometimes she is strict, she slaps, no? So child says, Mama is bad, like that. Child says, Mama is bad, but when he grows up, she says, no, she was good. She was slapping me to make me to actually safeguard me. So that's what devotee is. A mature devotee can see Maya is slapping you to actually safeguard you. Or a good fighter, 
he knows the opponent is helping you to become strong you can practice any amount of kung fu steps but if you don't have enemy you never become expert you can never become expert it's impossible so this word is helping us to advance in devotion that's how devotee perceives and that's why this was i mean to say you can imagine why if anybody comes to krishna and then he glorifies krishna as krishna whole material world is diluted by your energy that's a different kind of glorification if you come to krishna and tell krishna you are you are the son of yashoda you are you lifted govardhan you killed dhenuka so so many nice paintings then krishna is happy okay good but you come to krishna and you say krishna your energy is diluting everybody everybody is dying and that's what this verse is saying people can't see you people are in illusion what kind of glorification is this this is the function of god his illusion is working krishna is himself not interested in illusion first of all that comes in third canto maitreya and vidur prabhupada writes krishna is absolutely disinterested in his workings of illusion he is not interested so by the same time there are so many prayers like this in bhagavatam and sagasans of sagar take this opportunity to they are glorifying krishna by telling him krishna we as your devotees can see your invisible hand behind everything people cannot see you but you can see them people cannot people see this world but devotees can see by whose help they can see this world that's a devotee so devotee is sumedhasa he is very intelligent and krishna likes intelligent devotees that's what in 11th canto it comes parokshavadascha krishna likes parokshvat parokshvat means intelligence krishna likes and proper actually in natural instruction he writes uh, there are three categories of devotees kanisht madhyam uttam and interestingly proper defines uttam adhikari as shastra nipun uttam adhikari he is expert in scriptures not just by knowledge but by realization and that's how uttam adhikari all about vasudeva kutum kutum bhikam he can see the entire world as the house of krishna not just temple he has this ability a medium devotee a new devotee they cannot see anything besides temple and krishna they cannot view entire world as being connected to lord they cannot view entire world as being conducted and regulated by krishna so that's this verse all about but sons of sagar they are now beginning their praise they are saying ye deha bhajas triguna pradhana now this word deha bhajas this comes in bhagavatam 6th canto we all know rishabde nayam deha deha bhajam nena loke kashtan kamana rahate vidujami this famous verse oh bhai is to quote actually bhaja means uh, one who eats in sanskrit if you see really bhaja means eats prabhupa translates as who accepted the material body so bhaja means who accepted who is enjoying who is eating so what are we we eat our bodies actually actually people who enjoy this flesh they born in flesh that's a destiny so people who enjoy this flesh they all meet it us that's what prabhupada writes in one of his purport it might sound funny but it's like that so no meat eating that's a good prabhupada said if you can follow four regulatory principles 16 rounds your life is perfect prabhupada always said but the point is you have to understand what is the meaning of following four regulatory principles they are very deep they are deep and what is the meaning of chanting 16 rounds so for us at 16 rounds four regulatory principles but well how many years we have been chanting 16 rounds four regulatory principles are we anywhere near love at least myself not have we have, have we got any ecstasy like chaitanya mahaprabhu or even even 0.001% like that not much so is prabhu bar wrong 16 rounds and four regulatory principles and your life is perfect some people might say prabhupad is wrong some people are saying prabhupad is wrong if you go to gaudiya math if you go to vrindavan they say prabhupad 
just preached for hippies and Americans and 16 non four regulated principles and there is much more to Krishna consciousness more than four regulated principles 16 rounds you need so many things to become make your life perfect they say like that but it's wrong because what Prabhupada is saying that's perfect that's going to go for 10,000 years nobody can change that he's Prabhupada Krishna is writing through him so now we have to understand what Prabhupada is saying 16 rounds four regs and four regulated principles, what's the meaning of meat eating? No meat eating, yes, we don't do. But what about eating our own meat? Enjoying this flesh means eating meat. That's meat eating. That's one understanding of meat eating. What is illicit sex? Okay, we understand gross illicit sex. No illicit sex, we stop. But what about the subtle meaning of illicit sex? Illicit sex means enjoying this matter, this world. But this prakriti, prakriti is the wife of Krishna. And if we enjoy matter, then we are doing illicit sex in one sense. What about gambling? Uh, we don't gamble, we don't do share markets or whatever. You know. No, no gambling, grossly. But what about subtle understanding of gambling? Gambling, what does gambling mean? Gambling means you put something, it's at risk. You don't know what's going to happen with that. So, we are putting our life at risk by our own plans and not following plans of Krishna. That's a risk, no? It's a big risk. We follow our own plans and we think we can correct it. We don't 100% follow Krishna's plan. So we are gambling, subtly. What about mental speculation? Mental speculation, yes. But in gross sense, mental speculation means whatever Guru says, Krishna says, you follow. Whatever Guru Krishna doesn't say, you don't do that. Doing that is mental speculation. Uh, riding on the chariot of your own mind. But there is subtle meaning of mental speculation. Mental speculation means also uh, trying to add your own understanding with the understanding of Krishna. That's mental speculation. So Krishna is saying something, but we try to understand what Krishna says by our own perspective. That's mental speculation. Prabhupada is saying something. We can try to understand Prabhupada from our own perspective. That's mental speculation. That's happening. So, are we following four regs? Maybe, maybe not. We have to, we have to, we have to go deep. And it's all said in Prabhupada books. Prabhupada says in his purpose. So, that's what this word is, Deha Bhaja. Deha Bhaja means enjoying flesh. People who want matter, they are born in matter. Krishna is in a heart. That's what this verse is about. Sons of Sagar are saying, Krishna, you are in everybody's heart. And you are seeing everybody. But nobody sees you. And he knows us more than we know ourselves. He knows what we are going to think before we start thinking. He can understand. He is experienced, no? Just like a mother knows, you know, what her child is going to think. She knows. Come on, I knew, you know, you are going to do like that. She is experienced. The super soul is with us for millions and millions of life. He knows exactly what we are inside, outside, upside down. What we are made of, what we are going to do. Everything she, Krishna knows. So Krishna knows. Krishna is seeing that we are enjoying this flesh. So okay, you want matter? Okay, I give you matter. You take another body. And you get too much into this body. Krishna says, okay, fine. You want matter? So now, I'll bless you. You will eat matter. You will live matter. You will think yourself as matter. And you will shift matter. You will become matter. That's all. That is Krishna. That's illusion of Krishna. That's this word, Deva Bhaja. Let us stop eating our bodies. Otherwise, we will be born in this body. But then, uh, there is a question here. And the question is, what happens to people who are Deva Bhaja, who are enjoying their bodies? What happens to them? What is the consequence? And Sagar Maharaj uses this word, Bahi Prakasha. So, Bahi Prakasha means, they, Bahi means external, Prakasha means Illumination, Prakasha. 
So Vahi Prakasha means people who are interested in their bodies, their consciousness is always outside in this world. That means, in other words, they are not self-satisfied. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, those who are self-satisfied, they are situated within. Those who are interested in this body, they are situated outside. So Bhai Prakasha means, we have become slaves of matter. We chose matter, matter made us as us as his slaves. Is this glorification of Krishna? Do you feel like that? Or is this philosophy? We feel it's a philosophy, no? <laughs> it isn't, isn't, where is Krishna, you know? We're discussing about body, we're discussing about Bhai Prakasha. But actually this glorification, Krishna likes to hear this. That's why this verse is there, otherwise why it will be there in Bhagavatam. Bhagavatam is Paramahamsa Shastra. It is for eternally perfect people. Krishna likes to hear how his illusion works. Because he is a master architect. Is it? If you, if you, if you, if you praise a painting, who becomes happy? The painter. Is it? So a painter might be standing beside you, just like, who painted these paintings? So he might say, this painting is so nice, the colors are so nice. And uh, it's yellow and you know. So who is becoming happy? The painter. Similarly, if you, if, if you analyze this word and say, yes, Krishna, you are the master architect. You, you might not say Krishna is a master architect. But if you are analyzing this word, just like you are analyzing the painting, who becomes happy? Krishna. Krishna is standing there. He knows, yes, yes, this is God, yes. And sometimes Krishna comes, Krishna is himself surprised by his own material world. Just like Ramayana, if we read, Lord Ram, when he was traveling in the forest of Dandakarne, he said to Lakshman, Lakshman, such a nice forest. When Ram saw Raman, in Malmiki Ramayana it comes, Lord Ram said, my God, this Raman is so uh, so uh, he, he was he, he was smart guy you know he was he has to be smart he is like king of all three words and he was effulgent and Ram was surprised who is this person you know I always heard about him first time I'm, I'm, I'm like I'm impressed by his personality his power his aura Ram is surprised you can imagine <laughs> Krishna is impressed so Krishna is sometimes impressed by seeing his own creation that's that happens no Sometimes we, we write a poetry and when we read to ourselves, oh my God, I have written this. Sometimes it happens, no? we are ourselves. And, so, and we ourselves keep on reading our own stuff, no? You write your poetry and you will keep on reading your own thing. Oh, well, this is nice. You have created this thing and you like that thing. You are surprised by that thing. Similarly, Krishna. Krishna makes all these things and then if you tell to Krishna, Krishna says, yes, oh good. Yes, I am I'm, I'm the painter, I am the architect, I am the creator. Oh yes, tell me, how, how did I create all these things? And he becomes very happy. That's why we are discussing all these things. So what about the people who are in flesh and matter? Bhai Prakasha. The consciousness has become slave of Prakasha. Prakasha is all this glitter and illumination. Everybody is slave, although they think themselves as liberated. People think they are free, but actually they are slaves. People who think they are free, they are slaves. People who think they are slaves, they are free. So, if you think, uh, materialistic people, they think, oh, I am free. Well, they are slaves of senses, this word, this body. Devotees are slaves, they become, they choose to become slaves of God. That's how they become free. Just like, oh, in Valmiki Ramayana it comes. People who are not surrendered to God, they are orphans. Valmiki says, they are, orphan. they are orphans because they don't have anybody to support them. And orphans generally, they have a hard life. No? People, who, people who are orphans, they live in streets. What's their life? Always struggle. They are struggling. They are not free. They are all bonded. They have a tough time. But people who choose to become slaves of Krishna, actually slave is a big word but Prabhupada uses this word slave I told from Krishna book I quoted Gopis are saying to Krishna Krishna 
make us your maid servants and your slaves so there's a slight difference between servant and slave we start with becoming a servant but we hope to become a slave but perhaps to become a servant is also difficult no it's a very difficult thing to call ourselves as servant of krishna we're trying to become servant and we are hoping hope against hope to become slaves of krishna and there's a difference servant if you serve krishna servant gets a pay and what's the pay krishna is going to give you if you serve krishna he is going to give you something in salary what's that what's that mercy okay mercy and love is it prem vetan deha chetna jab tak comes he gives you salary he'll give you a salary okay this is love if you don't ask any any other salary that's one thing he'll give you salary love okay but then after love after you attain love then he will make you as his slave that's a, that's a funny part and the slave is you not you not get any salary now slave doesn't get a salary now you serve krishna if you are servant you get salary you serve krishna if you are slave what do you get and you get something you get beating <laughs> no slave gets beating no so that's krishna all about so what's good you want to become servant or a slave or you want to become yeah we want to because krishna's beating is also nice <laughs> that's one thing that's what gopis are saying to krishna krishna make us your slave your beatings are nice krishna krishna's beatings are like beatings of mother he will he will increase our love for him birth after birth so this is uh, this day bhajam bahi prakash prabhupa said in one of his purport a devotee can stay in one room and he can practice krishna consciousness prabhupa said in one room he can do everything why because he is not bahi prakash he is like a tortoise krishna says an example who can take back his limbs close his eyes he is satisfied he is not disturbed in his mind actually a mind is not in this world the word is in a mind that's what brahma says in bhagavatam we think we are there actually that is there in your mind that is why when you close your eyes what's there inside material world that's all it's not a big thing to know what is there inside us you close your eyes there's darkness tama and guna vipashyanti and gunas gunas means this world it's you can try you can just close your eyes there's no krishna definitely for me it's not there it's a proof what there inside us it's not a we can't we can't cheat krishna it's impossible so we close our eyes what there there is darkness this tamagun so sagar maharaj is correct his analysis is correct and what else after some time all kind of material objects okay good so he's a good analyzer so that's what happens when this is a illusion illusion makes us think that we are entangled in this world no the world is within us that's illusion all about and that's why uh, this word is used three guna pradhana when we are interested in this world the world becomes interested in you and it's it's normal if so suppose suppose if you're walking on a street and some person is coming from you know, so many people they keep on walking no in in they coming from the opposite side you walking you jogging and somebody is coming from there and then uh, you don't say anything to him he'll just come run and pass by is it nothing nothing doing maybe you just say good morning thank you in america in india they'll not say even that just keep on don't look you keep on keep on going you keep on going and he'll just pass by nothing but suppose you he's coming from there you're going from here and you stop and you say how are you what's your name suddenly you become interested in him he will become interested in you he'll start talking to you in the india they'll start talking <laughs> in 5 minutes in india you can know his entire life that's what it can happen so you will start talking to him that's all in trains it happens you're sitting and if you if you have a long journey 6 hours journey you're sitting somebody sitting in front of you if you don't talk he doesn't talk simple 
we start start talking six hours you are talking continuous what happened this happened this your family this 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 is what is word about if you are interested in this word this word will become interested in you just like a boyfriend and girlfriend if a boy is interested in girl the girl the girl, the girl will get interested in the boy and when the girl get interested in the boy it becomes very difficult because if a man become interested in a female he can leave her but if a female gets interested in a male he wants to run anywhere he can't escape <laughs> she'll catch him she can he can't he's trapped now so that's this word all about that's why gunan vipashyanti utamas cha triguna pradhanam pradhan means pradhan actually what proper translates influenced by three modes of material nature pradhan means influence pradhan also means was that pradhan um prominent mahatva yeah prominent no 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 prominence pradhan also means uh, pradhan also means domination dominate so when you when you get interested in this word a word starts dominating on you and that's our choice every second is a choice super soul is sitting inside he's saying okay what do you want and in a heart we choose now i want this mat matter i don't want krishna krishna sees krishna krishna is a diary for all of us probably it has become very thick you know millions of years it's a big diary probably has to keep a computer to get our all so he just notes okay yes he chose this thing so so if you're walking on a street and you see or maybe in 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 temple suppose and you say see a pastry and you have a you have a thought oh, this 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 good pastry and nice taste krishna records yes and then he knows we want to enjoy at after some time he'll give us blessings okay i bless you you enjoy pastry and then we get a desire to to get that thing so there's a free will and there's a desire so if you misuse your free will that free will will change into desire and desire is point of no return you will be forced to do that and if you keep on entertaining your desire you get infatuated rag doesh abhinivesh mo asmita that's all stages going on so we have to be very careful what we will in a heart in a, in the core of our heart and that's the point prabhupada is bringing tri guna pradhana material world will modes will start dominating us what's modes all about gunan vipashyanti uva tamascha so this modes tamogun rajogun satogun they will start influencing us what is tamogun tamogun is considering right as wrong wrong is right that's mode of ignorance what is right we start thinking wrong what is wrong we start thinking right that is ignorance what is service we start thinking as an as a trouble what is sense gratification we start thinking this is service and then confusion confusion means darkness and darkness you can't see anything and that's what that's what this word will do with us if you are interested in that so that happens with all of us no sometimes we are we are do in name of service we sense gratification we do sense gratification is it and sometimes service seems as trouble some you know my god we are stuck up here that that is tamogun so when we close our eyes we'll see tamogun tamogun prabhupa translates as confusion pramad alasse is it prabhupa translates pramad madness confusion this will be confusion is a service is a sense gratification how do i discriminate it will be very difficult and when you close your eyes okay you see confusion you don't see krishna gunan vipashyanti sometimes we see mode of passion we close our eyes there are desires from where those desires are coming we don't know but definitely it's not coming from outside there's no wifi it's coming from somewhere inside you know somewhere deep within us deep within us we are nonsense actually we are all nonsense it, i don't know we it, it is it is good to accept that we are we are nonsense because bhakti no thakur is saying gopinath mama ne vidana suno ami to durjana sada kamarata he is acharya in humbleness he is saying what is humbleness for him is reality for us that's reality for us so 
if you close if you sit and think and go deep and deep and deep and deep and deep then you will see yourself and once you see yourself you will become afraid my god who am i this is frightening <laughs> we are we are, we can be really frightening to ourselves we are we have messed up ourselves we are the cause of our thing you know there's no other cause neither illusion neither krishna neither this word we are the cause of our own tragedy and if we know ourselves it will be really frightening a real thing what we have made ourselves we are not that but we have made ourselves like this like halloween people <laughs> people are afraid some so you know mask in halloween people children came wow Well, you don't need Halloween. You can just go yourself and see yourself in mirror. Wow! <laughs> Become a friend. This guy, you know, he messed, messed, he messed my life. You know, we are, we are the our own enemy. Krishna says, no. Atma eva atma na bandhu atma eva ripur atma na. So our only friend is Krishna. We are not even. We can't say we are our own friend. Everybody's enemy to us. Even we ourselves. Our only well-wisher. So hear them, Sarva Bhuta Nam. that's only krishna the sooner we realize the sooner it is better so guna that is gunan vipashanti utava tamasva cha and how does it happen he says what's the mechanism how did we fall into such a stupid situation how did we become our own enemy is there any person who has become his own enemy no one does anybody wants if you ask anybody do you want to become your own enemy first of all he's ask you gone mad what's this what's this statement I don't even understand this statement. I want to become my own enemy. If you ask anybody in the on the street, are you good or are you bad? What he'll say? He'll say I'm good. Even a terrorist he'll say I'm good. <laughs> If you ask him, are you good? Yeah, I'm good. You know, I'm helping. I'm helping my whatever he wants to help. I'm I'm good. Nobody perceives himself as bad. But that's that's what is Bhagavatam all about. That's what is illusion all about. and krishna is saying yes you you have made yourself bad but you can become good but the point is how did we land in such kind of situation that we have made ourselves our own enemy and we do not know this that's the point see this illusion of lord krishna says yan maya ya that is illusion illusion means misconception you've got so many misconceptions in our mind and that by bhagavatam it helps us to get over these misconceptions And what happens by this illusion? We become we land into such situation. Mohitas, mohita chetasa swam. Our mind becomes bewildered. Mohita Prabhupada translates as bewildered. We become bewildered. And in this bewilderment, we can't see Krishna within us. Vahir Narsimha, Narsimha, Hridaya Narsimha. Everybody is Krishna. We can't see Krishna outside. We can't see Krishna inside. Krishna has mercifully come to us outside. Okay, you cannot see inside. I'll come outside. See me, no problem. But perfection is to see Him everywhere. That's the perfection of life. This is not perfection to see Krishna just outside. Perfection you have to see Neel Madhav within your heart also. No, one day should come that we can bring Neel Madhav from altar in our heart. That's all the Jagannath Rath Yatra. No, Gopis are pulling. They're gonna have to come in a heart. That's the perfection of life. That's what we are trying to do in this temple, and we want him to come inside us. That is mohitas chetasa. Mind becomes bewildered, and it becomes so bewildered, so bewildered. Then we start confusing service and gratification. We take sense gratification as service, and then sometimes we lose courage, we lose determination. Sometimes we think, well, okay, in this life, this is too much. We can't attain Krishna. Prabhupada said. Somebody asked Prabhupada. Prabhupada, self-realization is so difficult. Prabhupada said, "What?" Prabhupada was like that. Prabhupada said, "In this life, you can meet Krishna fifty times, and it doesn't seem easy. No, <laughs> it's not that easy." Prabhupada says, "In this purport, you can meet Krishna face to face. One day, it's possible. You can meet Krishna face to face. We are meeting Krishna face to face daily." This is Krishna, Neil Madhav. But at the same time, this meeting is not real meeting. It's not really we are meeting, no. Because if you say I went and I met that person, okay, what did you do? He didn't talk to me. He didn't do anything with me. 
Did you meet him? Actually, you didn't meet him. You meet him, you met him, but you didn't meet him. This is like this. We meet him, but at the same time we don't meet him because he doesn't talk to us. Well, he can talk. There are many, there are many instances in our acharyas. Krishna has talked. Prabhupada used to talk. Prabhupada many times he said yes. With some oh yeah, but Prabhupada once he was he was saying to we you know we all know Prabhupada was saying oh his deities and Prabhupada was praying oh son of Ishoda, please save me like I want to follow he was weeping of course he is not he is acharya so devotees asked Prabhupada what happened to you you are weeping Prabhupada says Prabhupada said yes I I I I, I was thinking you know that this illusion is so powerful. Krishna, please protect me. But Prabhupada was saying, I was weeping because thinking of you. Because I fear illusion, but you don't fear. <laughs> this is funny, no? So, that's what Prabhupada is. So, Prabhupada, that's Prabhupada said, you can meet Krishna face to face. Our meeting is not complete now. That is why when Mahaprabhu used to come in Jagannath, in front of Jagannath, he used to weep, you know. Why is weeping? He is seeing Jagannath. But he is weeping because he knows that that meeting is not complete. Krishna, in his humbleness, he is thinking, Krishna has not yet accepted me. So that's what we chant Hare Krishna. Holy name is Krishna himself. Yes. We are in contact with God, but that's not complete contact. Because he has still not accepted us as a servant, maybe as a slave. And that's our mission of mission of life. He, he will reveal himself. When he accepts us, he will reveal himself. Face to face. Then our meeting will be complete. Our mission is complete. That day we are meeting, we are waiting for. Not just waiting for. That day we are working for. We have to reach that platform. Somehow or the other. And this Bhagavatam will help us to reach that platform. It will help us to get rid of all our confusions and subtle, subtle understandings which we don't understand. And our life becomes perfect. One day we can meet Krishna face to face. Or He will come and meet us. We can't actually go and meet Him. He will come and show Himself to us. When we will be ready. When we not only desire, but we deserve. And we deserve when we will understand Bhagavatam perfectly. Madhyastha Bhagavata Puran. That's what it is said. Your life should be centered around Bhagavatam. You have to read Realize, understand, and perfect lives. And not stop until our lives are perfect. We should never think, this is done. This life, it's not possible. It sometimes happens, no? Yeah, this much is okay, I can't do more than this. It's done. Next life we'll see. Why next life? This life, it's possible. Rupa said 50 times, what? It's possible. So we have to be enthusiastic. When it comes along. Hare Krishna, Shri Prabhupada ki. Yeah. Any questions? I'll, I'm going to stop here. So, how to overcome helplessness to hopelessness? Helplessness. <laughs> how to overcome? How to overcome? Hopelessness to helplessness. Because from hopelessness, we have to come to helplessness. Hopeless is not good. I'm of course, hopelessness is not good. Yeah. So See, there, there's one trick Krishna says in Bhagavatam. Sankalpa Sankalpa Jayate. So, enthusiasm comes from enthusiasm. Determination comes from determination. Just as love comes from love. So similarly, if we, if we want to get rid of this of a decline, our hopelessness, our inertia in mind, confusion, the only way is to get get in contact with enthusiasm. And there is no enthusiasm, enthusiasm where you will find. Not in books, but in people. That's in people's heart, in spirit. In books it is there. But somebody has to be there to take it out. So that fire of enthusiasm, that is in the heart of devotees. That is why we need association of devotees, no? A, devo- a good enthusiastic devotees who doesn't become, who don't become, who don't lose enthusiasm. You can keep on day after day, day after day, day after day, who have fixed their eyes on the goal. 
everybody becomes depressed it's natural everybody loses some hope because the journey is long it's not short but the point is we devotees good devotees they don't become hopeless you know why because devotees know that the amount of service i am doing for krishna krishna is doing much more service to me in return the amount of service i am doing that is negligible in front of the amount of help krishna is offering to us is it what we are doing we are just chanting 16 rounds that also we can't chant properly and what krishna is doing he has given us a big temple his deities his prasad his devotees so if we compare our neg- service is negligible his help is extreme any gentleman who can recognize this that that person is helping me so much in spite of me messing up his all plans we can't stop serving him <laughs> we can't stop serving that person so uh, so out of gratitude we keep on serving him that's the idea of actually the idea in this verse is this out of gratitude in spite of so complex situation which illusion can land us into in spite of so complex situation confusion this that matter attraction we're surrounded by so many things we can't in spite of all that krishna is protecting us in spite of our negligible service krishna is protecting us out of his causeless mercy so we feel yes krishna is doing so much let me do something for him it's natural it's natural for a good person is it it happens with all of us now if somebody is helping you giving you money you don't have to do job i'll give you money that's what no krishna is giving us prasad at least for us full time devotees we don't have to work <laughs> we get food free food so who who can even imagine to live like that life in this life you know without money nobody so by any way that is re- that is re- that is reciprocal service that that keeps us going birth after birth after birth the more we serve krishna the more indebted we become that's the idea because you 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 serve 10% he'll serve you 80% you serve 20% he'll serve you 160% you serve 30% he will serve you 160 double times he'll serve you that so you become more indebted more indebted but yet krishna will tell you i have become indebted to you that's krishna see so he told gopis gopis i am indebted to you for your love for your service krishna gan become indebted that is krishna that is his nature so humble so nice he's always always helping us in spite of we are uh, we are uh, we, we are his nonsense child maybe we mess up everything so we get it we, we, we want to serve him who doesn't want a master like that we just keep on serving him in fact nartam das thakur prays in one of his saying song um, that song hari hari bhi phale janma banai nu in that last line he prays he says to krishna krishna not heli or ranga pae krishna even if i leave you you should come and catch me by my hairs and bring me back because i don't know what i am going to do next we are on enemy no so i may leave you but i know you will not leave me and if even if it happens please give me back because i don't want to leave such a master and if anybody wants to leave such a master he should be really crazy you know he should be really mad that is why bhagavatam says nunam pramatta kurute vikrama bhagavatam says these people are mad because they are looking for nice friends here is a best friend come and know krishna and you want to leave him then you are trapped actually so that that's how we get enthusiasm okay is there any questions otherwise you need to stop here What for? Hare Krishna Prabhu ji, welcome to Houston. Uh, in the beginning you said that we should appreciate Maya for what it is. But if you find that today uh, the most popular programs are basically Kirtan or Vinda Katha. Uh, because you know, there are verses that say, Esmin Vigyate, Sarva Vidam Vigyatam Bhavanti. Yeah. When you know Krishna, you know everything so the argument could be that you know all you have to do is know krishna then automatically everything is known so what what do you have to say about that is the is the knowledge about maya also included 
If we know Krishna, then we want to know about everything about him. That's how automatically it becomes known. So Krishna doesn't say there'll be magic, but if you know me, you will want to know everything. So will you? You will yourself research into that. So that's the idea. If we know some girl, then automatically you will you will know everything about him. Why? Because you will ask him, okay, what are you? Anything else? That's what Krishna says. If you know me, knowing means love there. Yasmin vigyate. So vigyate means Prabhupada quotes that no. So vigyate no Prabhupada says knowing real knowing means love because you don't know anybody without love. So when you love Krishna, sarvam evam vigyatam bhakti. When you love Krishna, you will want to research everything about him. You know how he walks, how he talks, how he works, how he functions. And automatically we will start knowing everything. So he says, you know me, and love will make you do everything. Don't worry about that. And the devotees then start learning everything as good. That's the idea. Yeah. That's why that word vigyate is used. It's not gyate, it's not knowing. It is vigyate. And Prabhupada says, Jnanam vigyanam sahitam. Prabhupada translates vigyanam as love, realizations, and jnanam as knowledge. So that's how we understand that. That's okay. Okay, yes, sir. Yeah, so, A mentally retarded person, uh, how karma works for that person? Is he responsible for Oh, he's called mental retardation? He's mentally retarded and uh, so basically it doesn't know what is good and bad. So, so what's... what's so, so how the karma, the law of karma works for that person? Well, he might have, he might have messed up somebody in his previous lives. He might have made somebody crack. So now he has got this karma back. He has become mentally retarded. So he, he, mentally retarded people are just like animals, like they can't think on their own. So for them, the, for them there is no loss of karma. There is no loss of karma? Yeah, loss of karma do not act on them. Because animals, loss of karma do not act. They don't have intelligence, no? Laws of karma, laws will act on those who understand the law. Is it? If you don't understand the law, why law should act on you? So if you have the capacity to understand law, it will act. Just like a dog. Dog can, if there is a red light, it can just go. It doesn't have the capacity to understand. But if you have capacity and you don't understand, then the law will work. So people who are like animals, law doesn't work on them. So like for example, if you do a sin in India, in Bharat Varsh, and you do same sin in Western, in, in other countries, the gravity of sin will be more there, the gravity of sin will be less there. That's, that's Prabhupada says in one of his lecture. Because why? Because here, uh, people don't understand the law. But they, even a child can understand. They, everybody knows the law. But yet, even after having opportunity to understand law, they are not trying to understand. They are, by their will, they are avoiding that. And that's why the sin becomes more grave. Just like a Brahman and in, in, if you see Vedic scriptures, Dharma Shastra, a Brahman say, speaks lies, a Shudra speaks lies. But the punishment for Brahman is more severe than the punishment for Shudra. Because he doesn't understand law, punishment is less. So that's how laws of karma work. The, the less your capacity to understand law, the less the effect will be of that law. The more the capacity to understand law, the more the effect will be there. So for mentally retarded people, they don't have capacity. So no so law, so karma will not work for them. Doesn't work. That's how it goes. One thing I wanted to know, maybe add or maybe you can clarify. Uh, just a couple of weeks ago, I was reading the fifth fifth kind to the last chapter or the hellish planet. Uh-huh. So there it is explained that uh, that three levels of you know, punishments basically again. So those people who are mad, actually, same thing. those people who are mad, you know, mentally they can't do. For them, the punishment is the lowest. Okay, good. Lowest punishment for the mad people. And then the next level of punishment is for the people who understand what is right and wrong and still do the bad activities. Yeah. Next level. So Brahman and people yeah. who are knowing. But the maximum punishment is, those, is, those, is for those people who have atheistic perspective. It's the highest punishment. Okay, yeah. You can say like that also. Who, who, are, who are actually offending God. But you know what, interestingly, now this creates a problem for us. 
because if you have the capacity to know to, to know the law laws are more strict now but if you understand the law they are super strict and who are we we understand everything and if we do a small mistake we are going to have it it's like super strict for all of us we have the knowledge we understand the law we understand who made the law we understand the everything about law and now if you do something you need to have it and that's it becomes dangerous for all of us as a devotee we can't mess up here we're going to have it so that's called offense offense is more grievous than sin if you do offense you are in hell you can be so better don't understand this <laughs> it will become more dangerous for us <laughs> any your question is good that's okay thank you for asking that question okay so thank you very much to all of you for listening and giving me opportunity to speak